In recent years, Disney's quality on the big screen has been… mixed to say the least. Their most recent Pixar releases, Sol and Luca, were as great as one would expect, but their in-house animated efforts ranged from mixed to downright awful, I just had to make a video expressing my rage over them. The live-action remakes don't help their case, Star Wars indeed causes wars between people regarding their actual quality, and even the untouchable MCU had some missteps recently. That being said, though, the one side of business Disney keeps nailing recently is none other than their TV division. Shows like Amphibia, The Owl House, The DuckTales reboot, and many others. Yeah, Disney might not manage all of those shows extremely well, and some of them just jumped the shark and never came back, but that's a topic for a later day. And it doesn't change the fact that all of those shows are some of the best that Disney has put out recently. This leads us to the newest addition to the lineup, The Ghost and Molly McGee, a comedic show about a happy-go-lucky girl named Molly being cursed by, or rather, putting her own curse on a grumpy and cynical ghost named Scratch. While not groundbreaking in terms of originality, and not even completing one season at the time of this video, I'd still say this is another great addition to Disney's TV lineup. It has great characters, a bunch of funny moments, the theme song won't leave your head, as expected, and Ashley Brock's performance as Molly is something I can listen to any day. I can't believe this is the same VA as Chloe Price, this is so unreal. Anyway, one of my favorite aspects of this show is a character named Libby. While serving the role of Molly's human best friend, complementing the ongoing enthusiasm with some shyness and reservations, Libby also shows plenty signs of character growth in the episodes she's been in, as she learns to speak her mind and even object to ideas she sees as bad. She might have more room to develop as the show goes along, but as of now, she does show a lot of promise as a character. Just so happens that one of the latest episodes, again at the time of this video, also confirmed that Libby is Jewish. Representation in Disney shows isn't anything new, as we've had Thai and Hispanic leads who shared traditions from their homes and even speak some of their home languages, but I don't recall a Jewish character being up center and the focus of an episode yet. As a proud Jewish person myself, I was excited to see how the show would present Judaism. And after watching the episode, I thought, you know what, why not make a video about it? So here we are. Let's check the Jewish accuracy in Mazal Tov Libby. I guess I could start by saying that Mazal Tov is indeed a saying of congratulations, as that's basically the Hebrew term for it. Mazal means luck, while Tov means good. But this isn't the form of good luck you wish someone before doing something important or big, as it serves more of a greeting for either accomplishing a big task, getting married, or celebrating a birthday. Therefore, the use of the term Mazal Tov in the title is indeed correct, as the episode focuses on Libby celebrating her bat mitzvah. Now, this is the part I was curious about, as some people tend to get it wrong. Most people, even non-Jewish ones, know what a bar mitzvah is. To those of you who don't, when a Jewish boy such as yours truly here reaches the age of maturity, which is 13, he participates in a ceremony at a synagogue where he reads a part of the Torah, Hebrew Bible if you will, and basically becomes an independent man, no longer under his parents' wings. This ceremony is called Aliyah Torah, meaning rising for the Torah in Hebrew. A bat mitzvah is basically the same thing but for girls, it happens at the age of 12 and not 13, and they don't have to read a part of the Torah because girls don't rise for the Torah. At least not initially. You see, a bat mitzvah featuring that part of the ceremony wasn't a thing for the longest time. It sure wasn't back when I celebrated my bar mitzvah 15 years ago. But in recent years, more and more girls started reading from the Torah as part of their bat mitzvah ceremony. I bring this up because Libby mentions in the episode that she is going to read a drasha from the Torah. Initially, this made me call foul on the episode, believing they just assumed bat and bar mitzvahs are the same thing with no major difference. 
Out of curiosity though, I checked if maybe things are different for Jewish girls in the states of unity and turns out more and more girls around the world are participating in an aliyah these days. So you know what? Credit to the episode for not only presenting the tradition in the most modern way possible, but also making Libby seem like the kind of girl who would go the extra mile. She doesn't have to do it according to the initial law and could only celebrate by throwing a party for her friends, but she goes along with it anyway because she respects her religion and because she wants to. That is pretty cool, not gonna lie. One thing I do want to nitpick though is her invitation to Molly. Libby's name is written in both English and Hebrew. While the Hebrew spelling for Libby is correct, what went wrong with the last name? Her last name in English seems to be Stain Torres, and Molly even calls her that later in the episode. Libby Stein Torres! While her Hebrew name is spelled as Simcha. I found that a bit weird since Stain is already a Jewish name, so what happened here? Am I missing something? But okay, back to the episode. Molly is doing some research at what a bat mitzvah is and videos online show that it might be this grand event with huge production budget. And call me a cynic, but I'm pretty sure this is a jab at how some teen girls today ask for huge ass parties with celebrity chefs cooking and expensive dresses. Don't get me wrong, it's awesome if someone can afford all of that, but I always saw these current parties as going overboard. What happened to just inviting family and friends to lunch or dinner at a place and call it a day? I never got it. And it seems like Molly doesn't get it either, as her fantasy for what Libby's bat mitzvah is going to be proves to be, well, a fantasy. There's no fancy food, famous DJs, or anything of the sort. Just Libby's extended family and a turtle team. Libby's male relatives do wear Yarmolex, by the way, so that's cool. From this point on, the episode becomes your traditional, main character wants to do a big party for their friend, but all the friend wants is to be with their best friend episode, which a lot of shows like this get at some point. Molly decorates the party hall, gets her mother to make a Libby ice sculpture, makes her father the DJ who actually puts on some Jewish music, so credit there, and relies on her brother to bring in all of the classmates to take place in the party. But Libby, of course, is stressed out about this despite Molly's best intentions. The breaking point seems to be when Molly announces it's time to do the Hora, which is a part of the religion and also puts the person of the hour as the front and center of the event, as the guests are giving them the respect they deserve by lifting them up to the sky and giving them presents on their special day. But the inclusion of the Hora isn't just a nice bit of Jewish culture being given the spotlight, it also matches the episode's plot in a very subtle way. Like I mentioned earlier, the horror's meaning is to show inclusiveness and in the gathering honoring the kid celebrating the bat mitzvah or bar mitzvah. Molly wants the exact thing for Libby by attempting to throw her the perfect bat mitzvah party and make that day special for her. However, Libby doesn't want all of that attention and only wants to enjoy Molly's company. When the bat mitzvah girl runs away from the hora, it's not just her anxiety taking over her, though that sure doesn't help, mind you, it's also that she doesn't want all of that attention to herself. She just preferred to have a simple party and nothing more. This even comes into play when Libby outright tells Molly she didn't want any of this, and by standing up to her friend's fantasy of the perfect party, Libby did actually grow up on the very day which signals her maturity. Again, this episode may be a traditional trying to make a perfect party trope, but they didn't change birthday to bat mitzvah just to be progressive about it. They also tied the celebration into the themes of the episode itself. Not too shabby, Disney, not too shabby at all. Before I wrap this up, I do want to point out that Scratch mentions during the song sequence that he wants to convert to Judaism. This is of course played up as a joke, but being the entitled Jewish YouTuber that I am, I have to point out two things. 1. Scratch is dead, which already means he can convert. 2. Saying that he could convert, I'd want to see him try to eat a milk-based food and a meat-based food together near a bunch of religious Jewish people. In case you don't know, milk and meat in Judaism is a no-go. 
cheeseburger, for example, is technically something you can't eat when you're Jewish because it has meat and cheese in it. You have to wait six hours between eating each of them. If you ate cheese, you have to wait six hours until you can eat meat. If you ate meat, you need to wait six hours until you can eat cheese again. Considering how much Scratch loves eating, I have a feeling he's going to load having that restriction on him. So he shouldn't bother. Also, Total Races should be a bar and bat mitzvah traditions from now on. I'm just saying, they might have a good idea here.